So in compliance with Chapter 231 of the Open Public Meeting Act of the State of New Jersey, adequate notice has been given to all members of the governing body, the local source, and the Westfield leader, the two newspapers designated to receive such notice. This notice is posted on the Borough Hall Bulletin Board. Matt, so far no echo with that? No, there's no echo. Everything's pretty clear so far. Okay, yes. very good. Okay, so let's start with an invocation from Councilwoman Pater. Dear Lord, as our country and communities continue on the path of recovery, please keep safe and well our first responders and all those working on our front lines. May those who have been affected by the coronavirus receive care and healing. For those we have lost, we pray for peace. We ask for your wisdom and guidance as we make decisions for our community this evening. Amen. Amen. Let's do a salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, America to the Republic for which, for which it stands, stands one nation, nation under God, God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, Martha, roll call. Councilwoman Andre is absent. Councilman Dierkes? Here. Councilman Messler? Here. Councilwoman Pacifico? Here. Councilwoman Pater? Here. Councilman Turner? Here. Okay, first we have the approval of the minutes of the regular and executive session meeting on April 21st, of 2020. So moved. Second. We have a motion, we have a second. Martha, Paul, the council, please. Councilman Dierkes? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilwoman Pacifico? Yes. Councilwoman Pater? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Okay, next we have the uh, approval of the minutes for the work and executive session meeting on May 5th, 2020. So moved. Second. Motion and a second. Martha, roll call, please. Councilman Dierkes? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilwoman Pacifico? Yes. Councilwoman Pater? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Okay, next we have our resolutions. We have our first resolution, 65-2020, uh, 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 Renee. Yes, the uh, Mountainside Borough intends to issue a $5,266,072 bond anticipation note and a $120,000 special emergency note. Both issues are to be dated May 1st, 2020 and payable April 30th, 2021. The notes are qualified uh, tax exempt and this res resolution shall take effect immediately upon its adoption. So moved. Second. We got a motion and a second. Paul, the council, please. Councilman Dierkes? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilwoman Pacifico? Yes. Councilwoman Pater? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Okay, next we have uh, resolution 66 2020. Uh, Rachel? Yes, this resolution is an authorization to issue estimated tax bills, and the Borough of Mountainside has the authority to prepare and issue estimated tax bills. In order for the borough to meet the financial obligations and maintain a tax collection rate, provide uniformity for tax payments, and save the unnecessary cost of interest expenses on borrowing, it would be in our best interest to do so. Our tax collector and our chief financial officer have reviewed and computed an estimated levy in accordance with NJSA 54-44-66.3 be resolved by the mayor and council in the borough of Mountainside um, as follows. The Borough Mountainside Tax Collector is hereby authorized and directed to prepare and issue an estimated tax bill for Mountainside for the third quarter of 2020. The entire estimated tax levy for 2020 is hereby set at $36,811,713.35. So moved. Sure, we got a motion, we got a second. 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 Okay, poll the council. Councilman Dierkes? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilwoman Pacifico? Yes. Councilwoman Pater? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. 
Okay, so next we have uh, resolution uh, 67 2020. Who would like to do that? I'll do it. I'm going to take it. Yeah, let Donna do it. Okay. Whereas the recreation director, Frank Masella, requested the following refunds, and therefore be it resolved, the treasurer be authorized to issue the following refunds. There are $640 for a pool membership, another pool membership, $348, spring soccer, $140, spring soccer, $140, pool membership, $640, another pool membership, $640, Spring soccer to $280 and a spring so soccer late fee for $155. So moved. Second. Okay, we got a motion. We got a second. Second. Yes. Second. Yes, we got a second. Okay. Martha, poll the council, please. Councilman Dierkes? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilwoman Pacifico? Yes. Councilwoman Pater? Yes. Councilman Turner. Yes. Okay, next we have resolution 68 2020. Keith? Uh, resol resolution 68 2020 is a resolution to replace a retiring police officer uh, that is going to be leaving July 22nd. The police committee interviewed uh, several qualified candidates and has recommended the appointment of Tristan O'Connor for a one year probationary period. Uh, to replace the retiring police officer. We're not expanding the police department. It's uh, simply a replacement for a retiring police officer. Uh, the salary uh, for that position is $45,265.22. So moved. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? Second. Okay, uh, Martha, poll the council, please. Councilman Dierkes? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilwoman Pacifico? Yes. Councilwoman Pater? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Okay, next we have a resolution 69 uh, 2020. This was a resolution uh, that we had a full discussion with members of the public at the uh, work session two weeks ago. I just wanted to uh, make some comments about it before we, we vote on it. Uh, I'll start with giving a history that this Alpine property was the subject of a uh, Mount Laurel Builders uh, remedy suit. Originally, they wanted to put 134 units on there. Uh, and as a result of that lawsuit, there was a settlement uh, which, re which resulted in the development being part of our affordable housing plan with a 30 unit townhouse development on the property with six affordables and 24 uh, market units. That settlement uh, is what has brought the borough immunity from any uh, future or from any more builders' remedies lawsuits. So we don't have to be worried about some of the issues that are going on in our uh, uh, surrounding uh, towns. Uh, Alpine uh, originally applied to the planning board and presented a condominium project, and that's what was approved by the uh, planning board. Alpine built the townhouses. They had trouble selling them, so they tried renting the market units. Uh, the borough told Alpine if they wanted to do that, they would have to go back uh, before the planning board and that we would not issue COs until that was done. Alpine refused, and, and instead they filed a lawsuit against the borough to uh, force us to issue uh, COs in November of 2019. The judge ruled that Alpine had to go back to the planning board, but the judge also ruled that the planning board could not deny Alpine permission to uh, rent uh, market units. Alpine then filed an application with the planning board. They also filed a notice of tort claim alleging that they are being damaged because of the delays in not being able to rent the uh, units. After Alpine filed its application, the uh, uh, borough professionals uh, consisting of the borough attorney, uh, the planning board attorney, and the borough planner concluding, concluded that it would be worthwhile for us to uh, sit down and uh, negotiate with Alpine rather than going back uh, before the planning board uh, hearing was to proceed. There have been negotiations underway with Alpine 
uh, for months now that resulted in the settlement agreement that the borough attorney, uh, the planning board attorney, and our borough planner all recommend for approval by council. Uh, John Post had indicated that to us at the uh, uh, at the uh, work session. Uh, the, the basis really for the settlement is that we felt that we could do better uh, with uh, uh, putting together some restrictions and requirements uh, by negotiating with Alpine than we would have gotten had we they gone to the planning board, all of which we believe are uh, for protection uh, of the uh, uh, neighboring and adjacent uh, property owners. Uh, the settlement basically allows Alpine to rent the market units. Uh, if they, uh, uh, number one, they have to comply with all the other conditions of, imposed by the planning board. Uh, there has to be a minimum rent of $4,500 per month. In order to obtain a, uh, a CO, they have to present us with the minimum, a lease with the minimum rent of $4,500 a minimum term of one year and a prohibition against uh, subleasing. Uh, also, uh, there would be um, enforce, and also they would continue to abide by the 55 year old uh, age restriction in all of the uh, uh, market uh, units. As I indicated uh, before, the professionals made it clear that the proposed settlement better serves the interests of the borough and the residents who's and uh, the residents whose properties adjoin the Alpine uh, development uh, and the rest of the borough. Uh, that any decision that might have been within the power, of, then any decision that might have been within the power of the planning board. So uh, all of our uh, uh, professionals uh, did recommend this settlement. I also understand that there uh, was some ongoing discussions uh, actually, there, there was a meeting after our May 5th meeting uh, with uh, Mike Disco and uh, Matt Deanna uh, for the borough, uh, as well as uh, 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 representatives of the developer, as well as the adjoining uh, uh, property owner, because they had some concerns uh, about insufficient landscaping, some dead and dying landscaping, a sign concern, fencing questions. Uh, all of which uh, I'm happy to report uh, 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 Mike Disco, our borough engineer, went out there this afternoon to uh, do an inspection of the uh, property. Uh, and I'm happy to report that uh, uh, there was removal and replacement of all the dead landscaping species. Approximately 50 were identified. Uh, and this was uh, activity was uh, completed last week. The wood mulch landscaping maintenance throughout the entire project was completed uh, last week. Uh, replacement of all the gray colored fence posts and railing with black materials, uh, which I understand it makes the fence look much more appealing to the neighbors. That was also completed last week. There was additional trees planted uh, behind buildings two and three, including <laughs> some plantings on the adjacent properties. These plantings supplemented the landscaping work installed in 2018, which was documented to be greater in numbers than approved than on the approved plans. That was also completed last week. A gazebo was constructed near building number six. That was actually done uh, the last couple of days. They completed the, the paving of the asphalt driveway. Uh, that was also completed. The uh, Alpine Ridge sign was installed on, uh, I believe it's on Route 22. That's been completed. Uh, they completed the road base paving uh, of the and repaired the distressed asphalt. Again, this was just uh, completed in the last couple of days. They installed the street signs, again, just completed. They replaced the concrete island at the entrance, which was required by New Jersey DOT. That's been completed. The final paving and striping of Alpine throughout the site was also completed. The milling and final paving of the Route 22 sh shoulder 
uh, as per New Jersey DOT, was already also completed. Uh, there was a television inspection of the site sanitary sewers, which uh, was done and they were satisfactory. Uh, the television mm -hmm. manual inspection of the pre-existing storm sewers, storm culverts, that was all done. Uh, so pretty much all of the improvements that the uh, adjacent property owners and any other deficiencies that uh, uh, Mike Disco, our borough engineer, came across uh, have all been uh, addressed uh, uh, to Mike's uh, satisfaction. And I want to commend the developer for the, 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 the amount of work that they've done in the, in the last two weeks. Uh, all of this leads me to believe uh, that uh, this is going to be a successful project. Uh, the builders want it to be a successful uh, project. Uh, they're very proud of their work. That's why they went out there and did all the work they did in the last uh, 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 two weeks. So uh, as I indicated, uh, uh, maybe I didn't indicate last week, but certainly tonight, uh, it's my recommendation that we pass this resolution. Um, uh, I think it's the best for the borough. I think we're going to have a very successful site there. Uh, so um, I guess I need a motion now for this uh, uh, resolution. So moved. Second. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Pull the council, please. Councilman Dierkes? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilwoman Pacifico? Yes. Councilwoman Pater? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Okay, so um, next we have the first reading. Uh, of an ordinance. Bob, why don't you explain to the public what we're trying to do with this ordinance? Sure. Uh, this is ordinance number 1285-2020. It's an ordinance to permit restaurants to utilize temporary outdoor dining areas in light of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, basically, because of the governor's uh, order to shut restaurants and um, um, only offer takeout food, um, when they do open the restaurants back up, there'll be limited seating and um, it, this um, ordinance allowing restaurants uh, in town to have outside seating to uh, reduce capacity inside and to help with social distancing requirements. Um, the body, the governing body believes it's appropriate to establish a mechanism that will enable the restaurants to more easily comply with applicable capacity and social distancing requirements. Um, basically, um, the, the, the review, there will be a review committee, um, which will include the borough engineer, um, zoning official, fire department, uh, police uh, designee that will look at um, uh, plans set, set forth by the restaurants um, to uh, an, an application process to the borough of where they would like to put uh, the tables and uh, it'll make sure that they're safe and they're in a good layout and they're uh, um, a benefit to the borough and also benefit to bring the restaurants back that are uh, very big supporters of the town. And we, I think the, the governing body would like to uh, support the restaurants in getting back to business and, and also in a safe way for the residents. So um, I, I think it's a, a good idea and I think uh, it'll be a, a benefit to the town to help the, the businesses get back to uh, serving food and, and people going out. So moved. Second. Uh, everything that I have seen from all of the reports of uh, what I believe will be stage two of the governor's plan to reopen, all of them, when they talk about restaurants, feel that, that they're going to, one of the things they're going to do is, is, is recommend uh, as much outdoor seating as possible. So I think this is a, is a good step, uh, as, as Councilman Messler said, to help our restaurants get, get back in the, in, the, in the swing of things, uh, as long as they do it safely and, and uh, practice uh, uh, appropriate social uh, distancing. So, and, and also, Mayor, this will this will take effect when you know, basically when the restaurants are allowed to open back up again, and after approval of of our um, our committee, and also it'll end on November first of 2020. This is a temporary measure, not a permanent measure that will, um, you know, help them get through this year. So, so moved. Okay, Paul, the council, please. Councilwoman, uh, I'm sorry, Councilman Dierkes? 
Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilwoman Pacifico? Yes. Councilwoman Pater? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Okay, so next we have bills and claims. Okay. Be it resolved by the mayor and council of the borough of Mountainside that the following bills of the person's name and for the amount stated below have been duly audited and found to be correct this 19th day of May, 2020. They can be paid after a council's review if and when funds are available and that the mayor, council president, administrator, and treasurer are hereby authorized and directed to sign and deliver warrants for the same and that is in the amount of $125,810.03. Here we got a motion to pay the bills. We have a second. Second. Thank you. Okay, uh, poll the council, please, Martha. Councilman Dierkes? Yes. Councilman Messler? Yes. Councilwoman Pacifico? Yes. Councilwoman Pater? Yes. Councilman Turner? Yes. Okay, so at this point, do we have any council comments? Okay, well, we're supposed to have a nice Memorial Day, so let's hope that people uh, uh, yep. are considerate and practice social distancing, especially with the at least partial reopening of the state, the, the beaches especially. Uh, I think the only way everybody's going to enjoy it if everybody does their part and being respectful and uh, practice uh, uh, social distancing. We certainly don't want to open up the state only to to move backwards and have an, an increase in the uh, positive testing for COVID-19. I am happy to report uh, over the last 10 days, uh, there has been no new resident that... Uh, uh, tested positive for COVID-19. There were some in the long-term care facilities, but none outside of the long-term uh, care facilities. So uh, I think clearly the, the residents are taking heed to the uh, uh, practicing social distancing, wearing a mask, doing things that are gonna pr protect, uh, uh, protect everybody. Uh, I'm also happy to uh, report that uh, uh, I'm told that 85% uh, of the second quarter taxes have already been collected, which is pretty remarkable with what is going on and the fact that uh, there is another uh, 12 days or so before the uh, grace period expires. Uh, just to remind everybody, the grace period does uh, expire on June 1st if you don't make that payment by June 1st, and we have to receive it by June 1st, the interest will uh, relate back to uh, May 1st, which is by statute. So I want to thank all of our residents that are timely making their, their tax payments. Uh, it's certainly, uh, number one, a good thing to see, and number two, it helps us to uh, continue to operate and provide the services that we need to uh, uh, provide to the, uh, to, to the borough residents. Um, unfortunately, um, I'm, uh, I spoke with uh, um, Commander Tim McLaughlin of the VFW. Uh, for those of you that don't know, he this past week was uh, made a, uh, a Brigadier General in the uh, state of New Jersey uh, National Guard. He was sworn in this, this uh, past week. Uh, originally, he wanted to have just a filmed uh, a celebration for Memorial Day. He is now going to be down in Trenton because of his new role, and uh, there, there's not going to be any um, ceremony on uh, Memorial Day at the Veterans Memorial. Uh, we're going to do something to honor Tim on Veterans Day. Uh, hopefully, by then, we'll be able to have a... Uh, uh, a full uh, celebration to, to honor our uh, war uh, veterans. Okay, so that's really all I have to say. I don't know if anyone else wants to add anything else? Okay, we have, oh, what about any audience participation? You're up, Matt. Uh, I don't see any as of right this moment. All right, let's give it a minute because it's a minute or so delay. 
Actually, it's uh, a lot better uh, now. It's uh, we're actually only on a on a ten second delay. Okay, good. <laughs> Studio, good work, Mac. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. No, uh, there not being any comments. We need a motion to close the public session. So moved. Second. Second. Okay, we're closed. Thank you, everyone.